mic. How about the way this guy plays this game of I am too important. I can't I am so above you media guys. I am the Pope, right? <laughs> I'm all the shit, right? Wow, he's ma micromanaging I know. the cycle, like BBC. You know, you've it's got minute by minute minute by minute direction of you have to do well contradictory direction of you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. Tell him this, cave him in this way, do that. You gotta, you know, rip him a new asshole here. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? And the second and then, his name comes up and they want an interview, are you kidding me? The gall to ask me, like I've got time for this shit, and that's all he's been exactly, doing, right? Exactly. Okay. His excuses of I don't have time to talk to the media. He did it with the St. Pete Times. He did it with the BBC. He's done it with everybody that's ever requested anything except for Backward Nightline. Right. And the earlier St. 98 St. Pete Times right. ones. And of course, which were both all of, set and, up and. And of course, those required nine to ten months of preparation, rehearsal. I mean, how many times for Nightline? For, Nine months, the guy was in my office. You'd get called up, yeah, and he'd go into this eight-hour freaking. Well, this is what I'm gonna tell him. Now, Ted, put up, put up. nine months. Forth. Yeah, nine oh, months. Nine months. Okay. Nine Ask months. me another yeah. question. Ask me another question. Ask me another question. Watch this. He asked me this. Okay. Ask the question. Who asked the question? Then he goes off into a 20-minute monologue. Okay. Okay, <laughs> but okay, you want to talk about the? You talked about the St. Pete Times, though. Remember the St. Pete Times? How many times? during McPherson because they covered it regularly. Right. And he was in that building the entire time dictating every legal and PR move where we'd get on the phone and he'd have a pad and you had a, you had the phone on co on conference on mute. Right. And when you talked, you had to take mute off to talk, right? So that he could hear the whole thing be there and write write notes to tell you what to say. Yeah. Like And if you didn't duplicate and say what was being said in the notes, he'd like stop hitting you, hit you so while head. you're on the phone. But you wouldn't say exactly what he said, right? You try well, to. to. Try to. Because this, his, his writing would be so frantically all over the place because he'd be really, like they would say something and he'd start writing the answer, like, you know, you, and then it would always be distempered and right. something you couldn't really say. So you, so you were having to try to translate it so that you wouldn't sound like a lunatic. Give an example. I mean, you'd be on there and he'd be going through the conversation and then it, there'd be, you'd have these huge calm lags I mean, they thought we were cult members. Because <laughs> you're waiting for him to finish writing. Right. And then you start saying, as he's writing, he's be going, yeah, say it, you motherfucker, say it, say it. And yeah. you'd be oh saying God. it, and he'd still be writing. And then you'd read everything that he'd said, and then you're waiting for the rest of the sentence right. to come. And so you, you oh stop no. halfway so through the sound sentence. like a lunatic. And, and so you can't get the sentence down, <laughs> and so you stop having, and he's, and he's like, then he's hitting you while he's, <laughs> Like this, right? Okay, so I remember distinctly one time when Tom Coleman, I had one of those calm lights going on, and Tom Coleman goes, uh, he says something like, how's your wife, Marty? <laughs> and I'm getting this thing in the th thing, right? And I said, I said, you tell your editors that your entire paper is a pack of bigots, Tom. And then now the calm lights on his end. Because obviously he's going, what? How many times? I mean, it happened all the time, <laughs> all the time. We ended up talking complete non sequiturs. Yeah, it'd be completely non sequitur, and it, it was like insanity. And it it only got explained to those guys when we saw them two years ago, whenever that was. Yeah. To let them know what it was that was going on on the other end of the phone mm -hmm. when they were having those phone calls with us. Right. But meantime. It, the, the number of times that he has had letters written to the media that have said, I have a completely packed schedule, I couldn't possibly do this. It happened the with CNN. CNN got put off for nine months with... In 2007, two, huh? In 2006. Six, yeah. No, five. Okay. Whenever it was yeah. that Anderson Cooper was first wanting to do a program. and. It went on and on, and there's long letters sent to CNN about how he doesn't have time, he's too busy, he won't have time till November, this is in February, he won't have time maybe until November. We'll and see this was a puff piece. It was, it was a puff piece that I 
work to get set up to be a puff piece. Right. It was going to be an hour-long program on Scientology with interviews with all the celebs, tours of all the facilities, everything. Right. And Miscavige got bent out of shape because he thought I was trying to usurp his role by me being the one that was going to talk to the media right. instead of him. You negotiated the deal <laughs> over several month period, educated them, got their agreement to do a what is Scientology piece. Like, tell me what happened then. I mean, you, he, they're literally at that point when you reported. He, he then pulled. says, what the fuck are you doing? You, and then has me in front of everybody in the hall going, who do you think the world wants to hear from? This little SP or me? So everybody says, oh, sir, you. Yeah, well, he's trying to set up this program. Well, I would have gladly let him go do the interview. Right. But every time they said, so the scavenge is going to do the interview? Well, uh, let me check. Uh, let me see. Uh, well, oh, yeah, well, he'll do it if blah, blah, and it'll be in November. And they're going, we can't wait that long. Well, he doesn't have any time until then. And meanwhile, he's dictating and spending hours and hours and hours dictating all of these lengthy things about what needs to be said to CNN in order to handle him not be appearing on the show. Right, and then ultimately, when push came to shove, he started accusing you of feeding him to the of an op, to try to set him up so that Anderson Cooper would rip him a new asshole in front of the national public. It was and so, so now you he were can't, trying to set him up. Sort of yeah. It How went on for months and months and months. And then he started going, oh, well, I'm not doing Anderson Cooper. I'm going to do Larry King because he'll ask me puff questions, puff ball questions. Right. So then he got Anderson Cooper in a competition with a theoretical competition. Right. With, in his own mind. <laughs> with Larry King. It eventually, the, the show never happened, right. as everybody knows. He never went on Anderson Cooper or Larry King, ever. And CNN, the, you know, the guys who are in charge of the news department of CNN don't believe a word that comes out of the mouth of the church these days because of that exact experience. It's, it's, and, and meanwhile this, I'm too busy, I'm too busy, and he's spent a hundred hours Figure, figuring and pondering and dictating to set, and to set up a, a, a softball thing there would be no resistance and he'd come off smelling like a rose and right. if there was any any chance of him looking personally bad in any simple in any way shape or form can't do it right and of course the excuse is I'm too busy to be involved in this in the first place <laughs> exactly <laughs> wow Jesus.